Hello mis amores and welcome back to my channel. Hope you're doing great. I hope you're having an amazing day. And today we are traveling around the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, not, not quite around the world, but we will travel across continents <laughs> all day long because in this video, we're gonna make three meals as in breakfast, lunch, and dinner from three different countries. Isn't that exciting? He said in the most monotonous voice ever and with the most exciting look on his face. Well, one of them, I'm not actually quite sure. It's a variation of a recipe from another country. It counts. This was actually suggested to me by one of you guys under last week's video. And I like that idea. And I would actually love for this to become a little bit of a series or for me to do this again. But for that, I obviously need your suggestions. I need you guys to tell me which countries I should do, which recipes I should do from which country. That'd be nice. But for this video, I tried to find the recipes myself. I love exploring different recipes from various countries, but obviously I haven't tried most of them yet, so I can't really compare them to the original. And I also don't always know how to do them like authentically and correct. All that I can do is research and follow recipes that I find online. So if they're a bit different to how you know them, then please bear with me. Just um, don't chop my head off. But I know you guys won't do that anyway, will you? I've got nothing but love for you, seeing as though it's Valentine's Day tomorrow. Tomorrow? Uh, happy Valentine's Day, I love you guys. The beginning of this video is gonna be a bit different to my usual kitchen videos, but we will be back to my usual style when we're making dinner, which, you know, I'm about to do right now. I'll see you back here after we've had breakfast and lunch. It's time to travel from Berlin, Germany to Germany. <laughs> breakfast is gonna be from Reichi. No, actually, it's gonna be from Hamburg. So see you there. Time to make the Franzbrötchen. To make beautiful German Franzbrötchen, you will need 250 grams of flour. Maybe I just gotta keep this annoying baby voice. 225 milliliters of warm milk, 75 grams of cold butter. Okay, that's enough. 35 grams of softened butter, 70 grams of sugar, 7 grams of active dry yeast, the zest of 1 limonium, 1 teaspoon of salt, and for the topping you'll need 150 grams of sugar and 2 tablespoons of cinnamon. Actually, take brown sugar instead. For the Franzbrötchen, I, I, I keep saying it different every time, we will need to make a so-called Plunderteig, which is essentially a yeasted puff pastry. But also, don't trust the word that comes out of my mouth, I've only studied at the University of the Great British Bake Off and have no clue what I'm talking about. Alrighty, put your flour into a large enough bowl and make a little trough in the middle. Afterwards, add the dry yeast and one teaspoon of the sugar to the trough and let it dissolve in the warm milk for a couple of minutes. Meanwhile, you can put the butter on the flour border, same as the lemon zest, the pinch of salt, and the rest of the sugar. Now it's time to mix it all together and make sure to mix the wet ingredients into the dry ones. I don't know if there's a difference, but the recipe really wanted me to do it this way. Now just cover it with a kitchen towel and leave it to rest and rise for about 30 to 40 minutes in a warm place. So my dough didn't rise as much, probably because I used dry yeast and not fresh yeast, but... It's fine. Now we're gonna knead it a little more and then put it here. Now we need a rectangle. This is hard, it keeps bouncing back. Wait, that's it already. 12 by 15, that's thick. Now, cold butter. Just like when you're making puff pastry, which I've never done before, so I don't even know why I'm saying it that way. We're gonna lay down pieces of our butter on one half of the dough. Make sure it's cool. We'll leave a border. This is so much better. So now we fold this over. Fold this over. Nice, that worked. Press together the border because we don't want the butter to get out. I think we're trying to create layers just like in puff pastry. One day I will make puff pastry, but until then we'll make plunderteig. Now we fold it underneath the dough so that the butter really cannot escape. Now we've got this nice little rectangle. Now we need to roll this out into another rectangle of 15 by 25 centimeters. Oh, butter, please do not come out. This is our nice little rectangle. Almost done. It says now we fold one third to the middle and the other third, but technically that would be a quarter and not a third, unless it's like, this. 
then I wouldn't fold it into the middle, but on top of each other. What do I do? You should now have a dough with three layers, which is what we've got. Like this, our dough goes into the fridge for 15 minutes. So guys, for the filling, I just saw a video of someone using brown sugar instead of using normal white sugar. And I think that would give it a nicer, like caramelized flavor. So that's what I'm gonna do as well. Most of it is brown sugar now. It's been 15 minutes. Our dough looks like this. I think it's just for the butter, honestly. Nothing about the dough changed. <laughs> Now we need to roll this out again into a rectangle of 40 by 20 centimeters. Oh, I can see the butter coming through, which is not what we want, but we pretend it's fine. So this should not happen because obviously we're losing a layer here. Why is my butter so soft? I'll just go with it, honestly, because I've got no other choice. So I guess just leave it in the fridge a little while longer. Ew. Now we put a little bit of water on top. Although, seeing as though all the butter is leaking, I don't think I really need this. And now we'll just put the filling on top. Mm, nice. Now let's roll this fish up from this side, from the longer side, and try to make it as tight as possible. I say, not knowing yet if I'll be able to do that. <laughs> Yeah, my butter leaking. Amazing. Make sure that the opening is on the bottom. Okay, so this side isn't really great. <laughs> I don't like this side. And now we cut these into Franzbrötchen, namely about five centimeters. Make sure to always cut it a bit on an angle so that you've got like this thingy. I don't know. Always in the other direction, you know? Let's turn them into actual Franzbrötchen. And we're gonna do that with the help of a chopstick. We're just gonna press down the top of it, like so. I think, but I'm not sure. Technically, this is supposed to reveal all the layers really nicely, you know? <gasps> this one worked. Why are they all different sizes? <laughs> it all look bad. We'll preheat the oven to 200 degrees Celsius and put them on a baking tray and leave them to rest for another 20 minutes. It's been 20 minutes. I don't think much has changed. We're gonna put them in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes. Here goes nothing. I don't know why, but they're burning and it hasn't even been 15 minutes. Here are my very dark Franzbrötchen in hopes that they're even cooked all the way through. I really don't know what happened, to be honest. I mean, I guess they're... Why is my father calling me now? They're not falling apart, so that's good, I guess. Hang on. I am hanging on to my dear life. <laughs> good morning, by the way. This is our breakfast, clearly. Oh, you're already diving in. Mm -hmm. You don't like it? <laughs> the flavor is good, but that's just not a fun switch. <laughs> no. I also love how the butter kept oozing out. And that's also super typical. It tastes like candied apple. <laughs> Cooked. I guess I could have taken them out earlier even. What do you mean? At least they cook their perfect. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's good. It's a nice breakfast with the coffee. I think they're perfect. Wow, okay. Hello, guten tag. This silly, silly boy totally forgot to tell you where we'll travel to next. If you watched my last video, this should not come as a surprise to you. So please don't have this kind of a shop look on your face. We will travel to the Australia, where people put their flip-flops, or as they say, thongs, into the sand all the time, as pictured right here. This piece of information is entirely made up and not to be trusted. It's time to go down under, where there are nothing but cute animals and kangaroos chilling on Le Beach. I'm pretty sure that, originally, the type of food that we'll be making is not from Australia, but Le Great Britain. But according to Australia's best recipes, a homepage I trust more than anything in my life, the following kind of savory scones are typically Australian. Australians? If you think this is incorrect, maybe you need to double-check where you're from, because Australia Australia's best recipes is always right. What you'll need for this very Australian recipe is 240 grams of flour mixed with three teaspoons of baking powder and one quarter teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of cream, 240 milliliters of milk, 120 grams of grated cheddar, one small carrot grated, which yes, I done with my small little grater baby, two tablespoons of parsley, and two tablespoons of onion, which I had already grated as well. And lastly, onto the very easy making of, mix the extra ingredients together in a bowl and stir 
transfer the sifted flour into the mixture. Add the cream and the milk and mix it well with a knife for some reason. Turn the dough into a floured surface. Knead it a little until the texture is smooth. Cut it into rounds, place on a floured baking tray and brush it with milk. Then bake it at 180 degrees Celsius until it is golden brown. It says to bake until they're golden brown. Are they golden brown yet? I mean, they're always more golden brown on camera. They look quite golden brown. This is golden brown. I think they're done. They look so cute. It says to serve them with some butter, which I've got here, which is gonna melt on these warm, or hot little scones. They just look scrumptious. I hope they are as scrumptious as they look. Now that they luckily look as good as they do, it is time to try them. I think I'm gonna try them on their own first. They were in the oven for about 20 minutes. Look at the steam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some butter. I don't think I've ever had a scone. I wouldn't know what the texture is supposed to be like. But they're really tasty. It's nice, it's a nice little lunch. It seems very light, although it's not necessarily very light considering we put cream and milk into the dough and eat it with butter, but it does feel light. Yeah, I can see myself eating them in Australia <laughs> whenever I'll be there at some point in my life. I think you can eat literally anything on top that you can think of. Really good for lunch, I think. Are you? That's all butter I get. Okay. Nice. With a lot of butter. Give me more butter, please. But good? Good! <laughs> Aren't we all super hungry now? Because I am super hungry now. I'm ready for an amazing dinner that I'm about to create. That I don't think, according to the recipe and my friend who told me to do this recipe, should not be too hard. I'm fairly confident that this is gonna turn out great and very yummy. But that also has to do with the fact that I love me some Turkish food. So for this meal, we're gonna travel to Turkey. So for this one, I asked my Turkish friend, Turkish, Turkish, my Turkish friend to tell me what I should do and she delivered. So thank you, Birge. For dinner, we're gonna make... Imam Bayude. Yeah, what she said, Imam Bayude. Uh, anyway, technically it's just filled up plants and that sounds good. And we're also gonna make Turkish rice to go with it. All right, and here are the very few things, in my opinion, that you're gonna need for this. Obviously, you're gonna need eggplants. These are really, really tiny. Look at how tiny they are. Four of these little babies. Then you're gonna need one onion and two cloves of garlic, one bell pepper cut into cubes, two tomatoes cut into cubes, about three tablespoons of olive oil, one and a half tablespoons of lemon juice, palm, Parsley, half a tablespoon of tomato paste, well, salt and pepper, some cumin, and also some sugar. That is it already. We're gonna start off by preparing the eggplants that are gonna get a bit of a special treatment. Get ready, cause it's gonna be special. We're gonna peel off the skin four times, like on each side, basically. Hopefully like this. I haven't seen pictures or videos of it, so I'm just going by words. But too tiny for this. Now we're gonna put water into a bowl, put some salt in it, then we're gonna lay the leg leg plants. <laughs> then we're gonna lay the eggplants inside the water. The last thing we gotta do to this is add the lemon juice. Then we're gonna leave them like this for about 30 minutes. They've been in there for half an hour. We're gonna let them drain here. Wonderful, wonderful. Let's put some oil into these bad beach and heat it up. Add the eggplant and let them do their thing for about seven minutes. I think they look great and perfectly ready to be taken out of this pan. Into this pan, we're gonna add more oil and put in the garlic and the onion for a couple of minutes. We're also going to let them burn because that's how I like them. Don't let them burn. Instead, add the bell pepper and stir for another five or so minutes. Now we just add the tomato paste and the tomatoes and also about 50 milliliters of water. Now we'll bring that to a simmer and also add our spices. Salt, pepper, a teaspoon of sugar, and of course a teaspoon of cumin. 
Let's let it simmer for six to seven minutes. This smells really good. Meanwhile, I put the eggplants into a casserole and I'm gonna try and flatten them. Uh, uh. Then we also make a little bit of a cut because obviously we're gonna have to fill them, right? Get in there, get in there. Let's try the sauce. Mm, that's very sweet. Okay, now we're gonna fill this oven dish with water. It says in German, finger deep, which I have no idea how deep is that. And now they go into the oven for 30 to 40 minutes at 160 degrees Celsius. As I've told you guys, the rice also needs a bit of preparation. So let's get that started. You're going to need 300 grams of this Pirinj mm, of this specific rice. Three tablespoons of rice noodles that look like this. No, rice noodles are something else. Two teaspoons of salt, three tablespoons of oil, and one tablespoon of butter. As a first step, we're gonna cover the 300 grams of the rice with boiling water and leave this to rest for 15 minutes. And after the 15 minutes, we're gonna rinse it under cold water until the water that comes out is no longer whitish is see-through, clear, you know, as you do with rice. In a high enough pan, you're gonna heat up three tablespoons of olive oil. When that oil is warm enough, we're gonna add the noodles or pasta or whatever it's called and let them sit in here until they turn a golden brown. It's doing its thing. That's a lot of oil. Ew, that looks like, yeah. Exactly. Ew. Okay, that looks nice. There we go. Now we're gonna add the tablespoon of butter. Now add the actual rice and stir for another three minutes. Let's add 600 milliliters of hot water. A teaspoon of salt. Turn down the heat to a low heat. Then we put the lid on and let that sit for about 20 minutes. The rice is done and it tastes really good actually. All right guys, time to serve. First off, a bit of our rice. And then one of our mushy mushy eggplanties. Wow. A bit of parsley. I don't love parsley, so that's enough. Look at that. That actually looks really delicious. Mmm. This is really tasty. The texture of the eggplant is kind of melt in your mouthy, and then the nice flavor just scrumptious. And then the rice is also really good. Mmm. I'm gonna devour this. And there you have it, guys. Wow, I can't believe I liked all of the recipes. Please let me know if I am to do this again. Which country should I do next? But that's it. I have nothing more to say. And that's all I've got for you tonight. So that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Y entonces nos vemos la próxima vez. Y bye!